Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. Today we're gonna talk about a serious threat faced by the anime industry. One that isn't exactly new, but it seems like it's reaching a boiling point where its consequences are getting harder and harder to ignore. Now, most of us are already aware of the outside pressures the anime industry faces. Seemingly, no matter how much anime grows internationally through an ever-expanding streaming audience, studios don't see that much of a benefit in terms of their own financial growth. The increased interest in anime globally goes mostly to the benefit of Western studios distributing them. While this certainly has a trickle-down effect on the topic of today's video, we spent a lot of time discussing Western streaming services in previous videos, so I won't discuss that now. Rather, today's video is about one problem in the anime industry that doesn't seem to be fixed no matter how many mandates and laws are made. That's the overworking of industry professionals in Japan. The workload and expectations placed on employees of Japanese anime studios is simply outrageous. This workload largely falling on animators, voice actors, writers, and other foundational workers of studios. And this isn't just a problem with the anime industry. It's a product of a very overbearing work culture in Japan that has existed for decades. And not much has changed, evident by this article we're looking at now. Government investigation finds 37% of businesses in Japan are guilty of illegal overtime work. After investigation by the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare conducted in the last fiscal year among 24,000 businesses in Japan found cases of illegal overtime work at 37% of businesses. Which honestly, this is hardly surprising. I mean, there's even a Japanese term for death by overwork. And these expectations are shared by the anime industry. There are plenty of horror stories involving grueling work experiences and environments enforced or even unpaid overtime for studio employees. And the way money flows in the industry works almost solely to the detriment of regular employees. Similar to Western movie studios, anime is made up of production committees of multiple companies working together to produce an anime. The studios are essentially contracted to make a certain piece of the overall project. They really don't have any right or involvement in royalties. If the anime succeeds, the only one really seeing a benefit is the production committees, which have no attachment to the anime studios. Unless you're KyoAni or a huge studio like that, you're likely working with committees to make your budget. While working under committees, the budget is low, the gains are low, and if the work demand suddenly increases due to unexpected events, the work falls on the regular studio employees who have to work overtime for small compensation. They brunt the burden of the work and get paid almost nothing for it, all to the benefit of the committees. So why is this bad? It should be obvious. Overworked employees will not deliver the best product. Burnout is a real threat and the increasing demand for anime coupled with the shrinking Japanese workforce tells us things aren't going to change soon. Even recently we saw Katakawa say that they wanted to exponentially increase the number of anime they produce annually. But that's what I wanted to talk about today. What the solution to all this is, I don't know. The problem is ingrained in Japanese culture, not just the anime industry. Enforcement of labor laws is really the only way to make progress here if Japanese businesses are going to take them seriously. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.